Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to create a hostile looking alien planet encircled with rings of blue cosmic dust all from scratch. First, we'll create a new document to place our planet and stars onto. Press Ctrl N on Windows or Command N on a Mac or you can go to File and New. Make the width 1920 pixels, the height 1080 pixels, and the resolution 72 pixels per inch. The color mode is RGB, 8 bits per channel, and the background is black. Then click Create or Open. Go to Filter, Noise, and Add Noise. Make the amount 100%, Uniform, and check Monochromatic. Then click OK or press Enter or Return. Go back to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Blur it 0.5 pixels. Press Ctrl or Command L to open your Levels window. I'll drag the input shadow slider to 123, or you can just type it in. I'll drag the input highlight slider to 205. Next, we'll make a new document in which we'll create the planet base. This time, make the width and height both 2400 pixels. Make sure your foreground and background colors are black and white respectively. If they're not, press D on your keyboard. Go to Filter, Render, and Clouds. Go back to Filter, Render, and Difference Clouds. Open your Levels window, and drag the input highlight slider to approximately 154. Go to Filter, Distort, and Spherize. Make the amount 100%. We'll spherize it more by repeating the last filter. Press Ctrl or Command F. Open your elliptical marquee tool. Go to a corner and press and hold the shift key as you drag a circular selection to the opposite corner. Holding shift made the selection a perfect circle. We'll cut it out from its background by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Before we place it onto the star's background, we'll create a new document for the basic shape that we'll use to make our concentric rings of cosmic dust. Keep the width and the height 2400 pixels, and the resolution 72 pixels per inch. Go to Filter, Render, and Clouds. Go back to Filter, Distort, and Twirl. Drag the angle slider all the way to the right. Next, we'll mask out the inside and outside to make it into a donut-like shape. Click the Layer Mask icon to make a layer mask next to the shape. Go to the center and press and hold Alt or Option plus Shift as you drag out a circular selection from the center to the point where the twirl starts to feather out. Go to Select, Modify, and Feather. Feather the selection 10 pixels. Invert the selection by pressing Ctrl or Command Shift I. We'll fill the selection with black. Press Alt or Option plus Delete. Deselect it by pressing Ctrl or Command D. Go to the center again. Press and hold Alt or Option plus Shift and drag out another circular selection approximately this size. 
We'll repeat the steps by going back to Select, Modify, and Feather, and feather it 10 pixels. Then fill it with black, and deselect it. Now that we have all the basic elements to create our alien planet, let's begin by dragging our base planet onto the tab of the Stars document. Press V to open your Move tool and drag the planet onto the Stars tab. Then drag it down and release. Drag it to a position approximately here. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Hue Saturation. We want the adjustment layer to affect only the planet and not the star's background. To do this, either click the Clipping Mask icon or press Ctrl-Alt-G on Windows or Command-Option-G on a Mac. Check Colorize. I'll keep its hue zero and I'll drag the saturation all the way to the right to give our planet an intense red color. Keep in mind you can change its hue and saturation at any time. Double click the planet layer to open its layer style window. Click Outer Glow. Click the color box. And if you picked a bright red for your planet as I have, then pick a bright red color for its outer glow. The blend mode is lighten and the opacity is 50%. The technique is softer, the spread is zero, and the size is 30 pixels. The range is 50%. Click Inner Glow. Click the color box, and this time we'll pick a less saturated version of the color we picked for the outer glow. The blend mode is Linear Dodge, and the opacity is 50%. The technique is Softer, the source is Edge, the choke is Zero, and the size is 25 pixels. The range is 50%. Next, we'll place our planet in Shadow. Make the Adjustment Layer active. We'll make a new layer above it by clicking the New Layer icon. Clip the layer to the planet and Control-click or Command-click the thumbnail of the planet to make a selection of its shape. Invert the selection and fill it with black. Then deselect it. We're going to use a large brush, so let's zoom out of our document by pressing Ctrl or Command and the minus key on our keyboard a number of times. Open your Brush Tool and Brush Picker. Make its size 2600 pixels, the Hardness 50%, and the Opacity and Flow both 100%. Place your cursor approximately here and click once. To fit your document back onto the canvas, press Ctrl or Command-0. Next, we'll add colorful, faraway nebulas behind our planet. Open your brush picker and make its size 700 pixels and the hardness 0%. Make the opacity 30%. Make the star's background active and make a new layer above it. Make a copy of the empty layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J. I'll scroll down so I can see the bottom three layers. Go to Filter, Render, and Clouds. Clip it to the star's background and change its Blend Mode to Vivid Light. Make the empty layer active. Click the foreground color 
and pick a medium color. I'm picking 0096FF. Click once over one or two areas. Click the foreground color again and pick a different color. I'm picking EA00FF. Click once again over areas of the nebula. We're ready to add the rings. Make the top layer active. We'll place the rings above it. Open your rings document. To get it onto our planet, press V to open your move tool and drag it onto the tab of the planet document. Without releasing your mouse or pen, drag it down and release. We'll convert it into a smart object so we can modify it non-destructively. Click the icon at the upper right of the Layers panel and click Convert to Smart Object. Go to Filter and Filter Gallery. Open the Texture folder and click Grain. Make the intensity and contrast 50 each and the grain type clumped. Change the blend mode to screen. Click the adjustment layer icon and click Hue Saturation. Clip it to the rings layer. Check Colorize. I'll make the hue 220, the saturation 48, and the lightness minus 35. However, feel free to experiment with these amounts. Next, we'll brighten it. Click the adjustment layer icon and click Levels. Clip it to the rings layer. Make the input shadow level 66 and the input highlight level 144. We're ready to wrap the rings around our planet. Make the rings layer active and zoom out approximately this much. Press Ctrl or Command T to open your transform tool. If you see this message, it's just letting us know that the grain texture will be temporarily turned off while we use the transform tool. Go to a bottom corner and press and hold Ctrl Shift Alt on Windows or Command Shift Option on a Mac as you drag it out approximately this much. Go inside the bounding box and drag it to a position similar to mine. We want to ultimately keep the inside hole of the rings outside the edge of our planet. Once we angle and position it, we'll mask out the area of the rings that go behind the planet. Go to an outside corner, and when you see a curved double arrow, rotate it clockwise to an angle you like. I'll position it to show more rings on the bottom, and make sure we see the outside edge of the rings in the distance. Go to the left middle anchor point, and press and hold Control or Command as you drag it straight out to stretch the bounding box. Continue to finesse it until you like its perspective and position. Then press Enter or Return. Fit it back onto your canvas. Lastly, we'll hide the area of the rings that go behind the planet. Click the layer mask icon to make a layer mask next to the rings. Control click the planet or command click it to make a selection of its shape. Open your pencil tool and pencil picker. Make the size approximately 80 pixels and its hardness and opacity 100%. Now, brush over the rings at the top to hide it. Then, deselect it. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.